What's going on guys, Hitpaws here with a very, very quick little tip and trick here for you guys in the material editor in UE4. Uh, what I've got here is like a robe, kind of a Dracula robe here. And as you can see, the bottom of it's waving around like it's, you know, kind of in the air. And you can see some problems here too, and I actually kind of, I left those in instead of fixing them just to address uh, some things that can happen. Uh, whereas in, in a lot of other places it's actually okay. Um, let's see, I got a little bit of a unsplit verts here but those are actually in the in the uh, original model so don't worry about that too much Whoop, quick, quick zoom in okay so basically what I've done is I have given it a texture based mask on top of the fairly standard method of uh, waving something around um, and this was actually built in substance painter and I'm not going to show that but basically what you do is in either painter or designer you go in and you bake out a position map and the position map gives you a gradient from top to bottom regardless of the UVs and what angle they are. Uh, if you were to try just a standard gradient here, it's going to be uh, it's going to be broken all over the place anywhere you have uh, like UV seams. Uh, when you do a position map, it, it like I said, it just gives you a top to bottom gradient. Um, in this case, it actually gives it to you from top to bottom, and I didn't want to wave around the top, I only want to wave around the bottom, so I did give it a 1 minus here. And uh, Substance Painter does default to doing a one axis mask, which is, like I said, top to bottom. You can tell it to do other axes, but I don't believe it splits the channels or anything for the for the three different axes. It may or may not, but uh, just just build a uh, you know a one axis, which is the default in Painter. I don't remember what the default is in Designer, and then just export that out, and there you go, and that's all you get. So if I were to actually just say preview this on him. You can see that's what I got. I got a from top to bottom. I have a a mask, and like I said, it's completely irregardless of the UVs because if I actually do look at the UVs here, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, boom! You can see they're split up all over the place, like the little ten, you know, the little pieces of cloth and everything. I mean, I split it up like crazy. So that's why we use that for it. And again, I have to invert it. So if we um, start previewing this node you'll see that it'll be white on the bottom and you know darker on the top and so what I do is for this mask I um, invert it obviously and then after I invert it, it's important you do this after you invert because if you do if you do this stuff here beforehand it will um, it will screw up because the one minus will will um, will flip like a like the power will become too strong so we give it a multiply, so just uh, just calling this the wavy mask, you know, with the, I guess wavy mask strength or whatnot. And I kept it at one for now, but if I wanted to pull the effect up or down, I could increase or decrease this. And then here's the contrast of it, which is just a power node. This is the quickest way to do contrast in anything, right? So that's the fundamental mask, which actually goes straight into here, like for the world position. Everything else here is actually doing the wave itself, and I'll go through it, but it is fairly standard at this point, and it's been covered before elsewhere. So what we do is we get an absolute world position. So what you want to do is type position and then scroll all the way up and grab world position and that will give you this. Okay, that's what you want. I, I think if you type world position, yeah, it, it comes up with if you just type world position. I think I had a space in there and it does not come up. So uh, just, just keep it one word. So what we do is we split the X and Y from the Z and then we pan the Z, okay? So we only want this, we only want the noise to be moving straight up and down uh, so that the wave is just this nice rolling feeling wave going throughout the whole thing. So we give it two masks, one right after the other, okay? So first R and G, which is X and Y, and then B, which is Z, okay? And then we take the Z and we add a time to it and we multiply time by a speed factor. So I actually sped it up here. Okay, and then we append them back together. Now, an append will take you know values and it will like uh, add them to the end of a vector, whatever's in B. So if you were to append three three scalar parameters together, you'll end up with a color, uh, you know, an, an RGB or XYZ. Okay, and then here's the noise itself. Okay, all you got to do is just type noise. All right, boom, noise here. And I've given this one a little bit of. Um, of editing so let's go in and let's preview the noise here and so what you can see is we've got this noise moving down alright now I've scaled it uh, very low and I've also I've lowered the number of levels okay it's a little bit more performant um, if for this and I don't really need all that much detail because the geometries to be honest is not that high 
Um, I don't know if there's a wireframe here. You can see it's you know 1600 polys. It's really not that high, uh, even down here. I know it's a little hard to see because it's dark purple on a dark background, but you can you can see the um, the geometry here is not extremely dense. So I, I don't need a lot of detail in it. I just need a general flowing wave here. So what I have here is I've set the scale to 0 0.01, okay? I've changed the function from simplex to perlin, all right? Because perlin is a little bit nicer. Um, and then, again, I do have turbulence in there. I, the default levels is 6, so if I show 6, you'll see it actually get like a fair bit more detailed, but I really don't need it, so I dropped it down. Uh, the output minimum is actually defaulted to negative 1, and I don't want, I only want it to kind of push away and up and not squeeze in and, and down, so I don't want it to go backwards, I only want it to go forward, so I set the output to be 0 to 1. And then the level scale here does default to 2, and that, you know, it's, it's fairly the same thing, but I just, I lowered it just a little bit. Just play with these values. Uh, every once in a while you'll actually need the scale here. Like if I go like 1 here, you can see the noise is extremely fine right it's very very small so as you increase the scale you actually decrease the size okay so it's almost like uh, like tiling alright so like when I did point one that's still too much detail for the geometry that I have so I brought it down 10 10 percent of that and that gives me a better flow okay filter width here uh, I actually put that to four zeros and a one alright so it's in the fifth decimal place here if I go back to default here of zero actually if I disconnect it, uh, it there's there's not a whole lot of difference but it, there there is when it comes to doing the wave you don't really need this but I put it on here anyway and it, it, it makes a difference in you know when when your scales are different so it it whatever you put here doesn't really matter what's important is that you probably should give yourself a parameter for it just in case something isn't working out and again these are all parameters that I could control in a material instance okay do not forget the clamp if it's not working and it's acting really crazy sometimes these values can get blasted up to it like you know very very high or very very low we want to clamp from 0 to 1 and again if if you were gonna take your noise from negative 1 to 1 if you did want it to wave in both directions make sure your clamp goes from negative 1 to 1 okay and then this is the actual direction of the wave it is going to push the verts in the direction of the vertex normal okay so the vertex normal right not pixel normal so where whichever direction that the that each point on the mesh is facing is the direction that it will go and we give it a strength multiplier right so we take this whole expression here and then we multiply it by this expression here and then we take this whole thing here which is everything and then we multiply it by our mask and our mask is what uh, ensures that it only happens down here okay and then all I gotta do is stop previewing here again the um, baking a position map is is probably the easiest way to do it I'm not sure if it's always the most efficient or anything like that but I can screw with these things now so if I say like the wavy contrast so I just put that back to one whoa I guess while compiling I can't can't click that's weird you can see that it's actually if you look real close it's waving up here right you can see that it's moving around up there so I pull that power up okay and that just pulls it down because it just you know the blacks go towards black anything below 0.5 starts getting pushed towards black anything above it gets starts pushing towards one kind of like a levels filter not entirely exactly like levels but it's fairly the same thing levels in Photoshop okay so setting it to four cuts it off you know around here or so we don't get a whole lot of movement above this point there's a slight bit here um, but there's virtually none up here now Okay, it is moving. You can tell that the that the anti-aliasing line is changing, but it's so little that it's not moving, moving. So I only get the real power down here. And obviously, I can kick up strength. Let's just go stupid, which may even look cool. I have no idea. Probably not. 
Okay, so you can see that because it's pushing the normals, that's way too much. It's crossing, crushing and crossing the normals. So I'll show you guys what the problem, uh, part of the problem is. Because remember, we are using this normal, so it is the direction that the that the face is is pointing is which way it's going to go. And when you look, it's a little hard to navigate here. It's so fast. I have to really barely move like a, a millimeter. If you look here, you can see that the way I modeled this is I gave it too much of a curve right here so the normal in this direction is actually pushing the the faces back in on itself so if I maintain a softer curve in my modeling uh, here I, I can avoid this issue almost entirely well I can actually avoid it entirely um, you can see everywhere where I didn't really bend it upwards too much is perfectly fine however in locations where I did bend it too much and point it too far forward you can see that we're getting this pass through here where the curve was too sharp so the face here got pushed that way where in reality if it was a nice soft curve it would be a little bit more of a of a better transition in in that case so if you are going to do something like this try to avoid very sharp angles if you did this on a <coughs> excuse me if you did this on a cube it's really not going to perform very well if you did it on a rounded corner cube it's going to be okay um, things like that try to try not to um, and, and you can always just adjust your strength or, or the size of the noise or something so you're pushing more of them at the same time. But again, keeping in mind that we are using vertex uh, world normal here so that they, they wave in their own, in their own facing direction. Because as you, you can see here, if you, if you pay attention, this face is actually moving back and forth in this direction, perpendicular to the, to the normal angle of the face right but when you look here this is going up and down and it's not actually moving back and forth so if I take a look up close let's let's get a bigger preview here damn it's fast alright so as you can see here this is not really trailing left and right so much because these faces are pointing straight up right they're moving you can see the movement very dramatic here going up and down so keeping in mind that we're using vertex normal um, and and that the faces are going to get pushed in their direction. You do need to tune your stuff to to work with that, and then you know you can always tune your um, your your uh, strengths and things like that to take it back. So there it is. It's fairly simple. Uh, there's nothing really crazy about it. The noise filter here is a little bit. Um, it's it's quite a bit more expensive than just to say hey you know texture and then um, grab like say like the the noise one of these noises here uh, you could use one of these if you wanted to uh, so we go say oops um, convert to the parameter here but what will happen is where you can see a UV seam like right there the noise am I not previewing it I thought I was previewing it. Oh, I think I turned it into a parameter see where the noise has a seam right there so in, unless I did a world aligned uh, texture here uh, it's not going to work so well and uh, which you can do you can you can use world aligned here and you can say world aligned texture right this uh, I actually get rid of that I'll pull it pull it up here grab noise again uh, noise one or two doesn't really matter um, and then I just need to convert it to a texture object so that it can be plugged in so and then what we would do is for world position we would take that there and then obviously we'd need like a texture size here so it's just probably going to be a little bit too large it's probably going to pan a lot faster than this noise does but now if we take the XYZ uh, we can we can do the same thing but this isn't going to pan so the world well actually no it will it will you can see that I actually got fairly the same thing but see because of the texture size is so small it's just giving me this very fluttery type wave there but it's still going in its world normal okay uh, you can see here that this you don't see movement here but when I turn it this way uh, if it ever gets to it I have a feeling that the the panner is never gonna hit that or something um, let's let's take a look here if we start previewing the node you can see that I'm still just panning in the vertical direction but when we get down here it starts squirreling out because uh, of the way that these that these are facing um, going down in the Z is just gonna stretch it in that in that general direction so 
it, it, it's not it's not going to give you as good results right you're going to get some weirdness going through the whole thing so that's why I opted for using their their procedural noise which is actually a volumetric noise which is really handy especially for like fireballs and stuff like that but it's also extremely handy for stuff like this so that's why I didn't that's why I didn't go with this because it's a little bit harder to manage um, and we'll get we'll definitely get better results here and it's worth it this is actually kind of a key character he's only gonna be pretty much one of them in the in the game at any one time so you can see what you know a ne fairly nice wavy feel to the whole thing and again I could inc decrease the the um, scale of it and then increase the strength of it if I wanted to I haven't created a material instance for it yet or anything like that this was just an experiment but it worked out well I think uh, even with the problem so it should be easy fix uh, in the um, this right here will be an easy fix just by smoothing out the model and going from there so hopefully this is useful and you guys found it interesting and uh, if you have any questions or anything like that let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to them so this is Hippos signing off thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next one